Greetings gentlemen and ladies, old school game snob here. In today's video we're gonna learn how to uh, bump, bump a, bump a character. Bump him, just give him a good little bumpy bump. Um, of course, this one's receiving damage. Whoa. I think I need to uh, set up my camera collisions a little bit there. Uh, that's actually what I was just what I was about to do before I decided to do a little tutorial video here. But um, basically, depending on which direction the characters hit, he'll go flying in a certain direction. Uh, and depending on how much speed he gets hit with, he'll go flying further. There we go. And when he dies, we trigger the ragdoll. Uh, anyway, this took me a while to figure out how to actually accomplish. This actually took me two days to figure out how to accomplish. Easy when you know how. But, um... Let's take a look. All right, so let's take a look at how I uh, ended up doing this eventually. Actually, not that hard. Of course not. Of course not. Not when you know how. Uh, but I had a hard time finding some tutorial videos <clears throat> on this, um, so I thought I'd do one. Anyway, uh, so what you're going to want to start out with is a box collider. Uh, so you see I've just got a, a normal box collider here uh, with some specific fi uh, specific collision uh, 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 settings attached to it. So what I have got here is the, uh, is that the vehicle collision box? Yeah, so basically the vehicle collision which is, actually I've got a custom, sorry, the vehicle type but the custom preset which looks looks like this. Ignore everything except for the pawn or, or whatever you might want to run into, right? But in this case we're doing the pawn. <clears throat> I might expand that later. Um, the other thing you're going to want to do is head on over to your project settings, go to collisions, add a new collision type under your presets right here. Just go ahead and click new type. Uh, and then <clears throat> you can fill that out to be like this. <clears throat> um, basically everything is going to be uh, ignore uh, and the pawn will be overlap. Basically exactly what we were looking at before. Um, and actually, in uh, retro uh, retrospect, it, you know, I could probably just go right ahead and select that collision preset here because I have Ghost Car already configured exactly how it should be. Um, uh, okay, so that's uh, part of it. The next part is uh, the, your uh, collision event. So you're going to want to right-click on your box and just add an event. Go on collision. Uh, sorry, it's uh, it's on uh, what is it on component begin overlap for your box, and that will create an event for you like this. Uh, from here, what I've done is I've set up a blueprint interface, and uh, let's let's take a look closer look. So number one, I'm just promoting the other actor to a variable, just because I find it uh, a little more neat and tidy. All right, that way I can just put other actor right here instead of dragging these pins out. I hate when I I hate dragging pins around all over the place. Right, it just it just irks the OCD organizational part of me. So that's all the reason I'm setting other actor for here. So now of course we're in our vehicle uh, blueprint vehicle event graph. Uh, this just prints out bumped when the when the when the when there is an overlap event that occurs. Next up, I am doing the. Uh, bump me please blueprint interface all right so here's what we're going to do for the bump me please blue, blueprint interface just go ahead and right click somewhere go and uh, create a new blueprint interface like so uh, here's mine bump bpi now <clears throat> under my bump bpi i've just renamed the default function that you start with it's like untitled or something i just renamed it to bump me please and i've added three inputs bump x bump bump y and bump z uh, and these are all of vector type. Uh, sorry, no, of float, float types. Okay, so that's all I'm doing for Bump Me Please. Just save that, that's good to go. Uh, next up, uh, back to sci-fi, back to your vehicle. Uh, and what we're going to do here is we're going to figure out which direction the vehicle is going in order to determine which direction we want to send our pawn flying into, right? So, you know, so he flies in the, in the direction that he seems like he should, right? In order to do that, all I'm doing is getting the forward vector of my vehicle mesh. That's my, you know, my car, my car that's driving, getting the forward vector of that. Uh, I'm also getting the, uh, um, oh, by the way, guys, if you're not using the chaos vehicle movement component, you'll probably have to get the movement speed in a slightly different 
way, but I'm using the chaos vehicle movement component and it's got this nice little node which is uh, get forward movement speed. So in order to get that I just grab my, my component and get get forward movement speed in MPH because that's a nice easy easy thing to multiply against. <coughs> and then I'm, I'm grabbing that and I'm adding that into my basically my forward vector uh, uh, times my speed. Right, so what we're doing here is we're figuring out how much force to apply to the character based on how fast the car is going and what direction it's going in, right? So basically we're just going to add a, uh, add a, add a impulse, yeah, add an impulse when the character gets bumped. Right now it's going very slow, so when it gets bumped, it won't go too far. Okay, so it goes a little faster, gets bumped a little further. It goes a little faster, gets bumped a little further. Right, and of course you can tweak these around however you like. Whoop! Again, I gotta get my camera collisions sorted out there. Um, so, okay, so basically, yeah, so we're getting the forward vector of the vehicle, which way it's going. We're getting the vehicle component to see how fast that's going. Now we're multiplying a float times a vector. Basically, just grab a multiplication node, plug in your your vector, plug in your float. And then uh, we're going to split the split split the split the pin or whatever it's called split pin. Uh, so you get X, Y, and Z. Right click and split that pin. Uh, and now we're going to gr uh, grab a couple of multiplication nodes, just times times because uh, we want to apply additional force. This is this is force right here. How much force is going to be applied? in the direction that the character is being bumped, right? So this is, uh, basically this is saying <clears throat> get the uh, get the direction, get the speed, multiply that times 4,000 is what I found is a decent little number for what you can see there so far about it. So, you know, if I was to multiply this times 40,000, he would go bump, you know, he would go a lot more. He would go a lot further, I guess you could say. <laughs> so it's like, did, right? So, wow, wow, that's great, great fun. Okay, so. Yeah, obviously you'll want to tweak this <clears throat> to your uh, specifications. Uh, I do find that it is kind of important to give the character enough bump so that he doesn't continually collide with the vehicle. We want to get him out of the way, basically, so he doesn't collide with the vehicle over and over again because that could lead to that could potentially lead to multiple bump weirdness, weird physicy things going on, um, and also running over multiple guys. I don't know how that's going to go. Pretty well! Actually, that went really well. Great. Awesome. Okay. That was one thing I hadn't tested yet. So, alright. So, after we've grabbed that, <clears throat> we're going to feed that into our Bump Me Please Blueprint interface. So, you're just going to basically bump, you know, grab your Blueprint interface message, right? So, that's the type Bump Me Please message. Uh, we'll plug in our X, we'll plug in our Y, and our Z is basically our up force. Right, so I've just got an arbitrary amount to kind of decide how much up force I want to apply to my pawn when he's bumped. You can see that was a lot more. That was a whole lot more, but I just want to give him a little bit of upward bump force uh, in order to be able to remove friction from the character so that he can basically just kind of get propelled through the air a little more easily. Do I need to do that? I'm pretty sure I need I don't know. Anyway, after he gets bumped, we're going to set our box box collision to no collision, a profile, uh, set collision profile name uh, to no collision. You just have to type that out. Uh, that means that he will only bump once for uh, 4.2 seconds. That's just going to prevent multiple repeat overlap bumps. So you'll you'll see if I if I take that out, he'll get bumped like a bunch of times in a row, right? Or did he? No, nope, he didn't. Well, I was having... Oh, there we go. There's the multiple bump. So he, depending on speed and things like that, he could get bumped multiple times in a row, and then the uh, application of force could get applied multiple times, like, just instantly, right? So you get weird weirdness. So basically, all I'm doing is I'm setting the collision profile of the vehicle bump box, I guess you could say. That's actually a good name for it, bump box. I'm going to rename that right now to bump box. It's a great, great name. I'm going to uh, set the bump box to no collision. Uh, this is applying some damage. Uh, if you want to apply damage, uh, you can just take a look at how that's done. Basically what I'm doing is I'm getting the forward speed again, <clears throat> multiplying that times one. So if he's going 50 miles an hour, it'll do 50 points of damage. 
and I'm just pumping that into the base damage. The hit pump from direction, I'm using uh, the forward vector of the vehicle. Um, I, I don't think this applies to, you could use any damage, I'm using point damage just so I can separate it from radial damage a little bit more easy, so that's why I've got my hit from direction. Uh, I, I don't know if it really matters too much for just applying damage, like if you want to apply any, any damage you could do that, but that's how I've got mine set up. Again, hit info, don't fully understand what to do with some of these nodes yet, but I've got mine from the sweep result right here just because it seems to work all right. So good enough for now. Mm -hmm. uh, for the other actor, <clears throat> I'm just plugging in the other actor from here, which I promoted to a variable. Again, just to not have nodes dragging everywhere across my blueprint, because that just kind of bugs me. And then, yeah, basically just whatever the speed is in miles per hour <clears throat> times whatever multiplication of damage you want to do. In this case, I've just got it at one for one for testing. And then finally, I've got a 0.2 second delay. Is this the perfect optimal time for delay? I don't know, that's just what I'm starting with. It seems to work pretty well. This will just basically prevent the uh, bump. This will basically set the collision of the of the of the bump box to no collision for at least 0.2 seconds, so that we don't get multiple bumps. And then we're going to select the collision back to ghost car, which, is, if you remember, we set that up over here. We set up ghost car to to uh, ignore everything except our pawn, which we overlap with. Okay, uh, th okay, so that's basically the setup for the car, all right? Uh, now, let's head on over to our hero, <clears throat> uh, to our, our character's pawn, and we're going to execute some stuff when when the uh, blueprint interface event bump me occurs. So, of course, start out uh, in your class settings by adding your blueprint interface. I've got bump BPI, which is, of course, uh, the bump BPI, the blueprint interface that we created here. Right, the bump, 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 as it were. Uh, you just go ahead and find that and add your interface. Uh, let's see. Just go ahead and add, look for it, find it, and then once it's there, then you'll be able to use the event bump uh, uh, blueprint interface. So I'm just going to show you where to find that. Uh, you want to use the add event version, not the function, not the, all these other options of it, but you want to use the event version <clears throat> of it. So event bump me, please. Now, Here's where we apply force to our character. Now I am using the general movement component, which is a plugin for basically easy replication of movement, but you can do this with your character movement, uh, your character movement, uh, co character movement component, which comes, you know, standard with Unreal. That's what probably most of you are using. Uh, and it's gonna be basically the same thing. You're just going to add force for, from the character movement component, which would, there's my general movement component, that's what mine is, GMC. Uh, but you're going to use add force from, from your, basically from your character, character, maybe your character movement class. Well, you'll, you'll, you'll have to find which one that is for you. It's from your character movement class, and you're just gonna wanna add force uh, on your X, on your Y, and for your Z. I've got the delta time set to two seconds for my uh, general movement component plugin. Uh, does this come with the character movement component? I'm not sure. I haven't used it uh, in a while. I forget. But basically, this just applies force for two seconds uh, in that current direction. I don't know if that's the perfect setting or not. That's just what I'm using for now. I'm also setting the walkable floor angle <clears throat> on my character. And again, you'll have to grab the equivalent of this. It's, I think it's called the same same, same node, but not under GMC. It's, it will be under your character movement component. Uh, you'll set the walkable floor angle to zero. That means basically that the character will, will uh, uh, even on a perfectly flat surface, when they get bumped, they'll basically be made airborne, which I think it just makes the, uh, it, it stops them from sliding along the ground. Uh, it kind of just, it creates the, a more natural looking bump back effect. So we're setting the walkable floor angle to zero so that basically any ground slope angle is quote unquote falling. Uh, now I'm just setting a time delay here uh, for them to be quote-unquote falling for until I set the walkable floor angle back to its original, which was 45 degrees. And that's all I'm doing here in the event bump me please. And that's basically it, guys. That's basically it. You can now apply this event bump me please to basically any pawn that you might want to get hit. Probably vehicles and stuff like that. I haven't tested that out as well. Oh, and if you want to, of course, uh, get your character to ragdoll, once they're once they're dead you're just gonna have to you know set up your damage here's how mine looks uh, in case you want to see 
uh, on event point damage. Uh, damage received uh, is then being subtracted against health. And if the character then dies, set simulate physics on my meshes. On my character mesh, you'll probably only have one unless you have male and female like I do. Uh, collision prof profile preset to ragdoll and uh, that's it. That's it. That's about it. Um, I've also got the add force system set up here, which uh, uh, basically takes into account the amount of damage that was received, except that that's only for radial da I'm not really sure what I've done here. Basically, there's your ragdoll. There may be a few things that I need to configure in a slightly different way um, because I'm sharing radial damage with point damage, but that is either here or there. That's kind of not the point of the video. The point of the video is to just basically show you how to set up bump bump physics on your vehicle and get that kind of working well enough to start tweaking, I suppose. All right, that's it. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. God, that's fun. This took two days, guys. Two, three days of, of, of mucking around with collision profiles to finally figure out what the heck was going wrong. But now, it seems to work pretty good. I think we missed a guy. That's because the 0.2 seconds might be, might not, might be too long. I might need to set that down to 0.1 second so it's, uh, so it, uh, so it uh, has potential to run over at top speed, run over multiple players at top speed. I don't know. I'm gonna try that really quick and see how it works. But that's it for the tutorial. You guys can watch me run into these guys one more time if you want. Otherwise. If you just uh, if you know if you've got the knowledge you need and you're ready to go, that's it. That's the end of the tutorial. Here we go. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Oh. The last one didn't quite happen fast enough. I don't know. I wonder what happened if we set this down even lower. Like how much do we need to avoid that multiple bump collision, right? So that we could you know hit quickly, like really quickly, but not repeatedly hit the same character. I'm not sure. We're at like point. Zero one seconds right now. It might be enough. I'm not sure. It might not be. We'll see. We'll see how this works. One, two, three. No, I'm getting multiple hits. All sorts of hits. So I'm not sure. Uh, most likely that's not going to come up too problematically. But I'm going to set that down to point 0.1. Try. I'm going to try that one more time. Most probably it's not going to come up too problematically in actual gameplay because when do you when do you get to top speed down like you know a whole row of, of pawns? Probably not too frequently, but that is the best system I've got figured out at the moment. Yeah, so we missed one there too. Yeah. Anyway, maybe 0.5. Anyway, see you guys later. <laughs> I'm gonna tweak this.